You're listening to the June 23rd, 2024 reading of Blossom Goodchild's channeling with the Federation of Light. Hello, hello. Well, no worries about what I'd like to talk about today. The new monolith that's appeared in Nevada, of course. Go, 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 go. Greetings to you, Blossom, and each one attending this conversation, be it by word or sound. We can feel your excitement, Blossom, and this is most pleasing. Well, it is exciting. In my mind, without having to search back, did you not say that there were five more to come after the last one, in the sort of soonish future? If that isn't leaving things open, I don't know what is. This is correct, Blossom. The next one to arrive is to be in yet an even more obscure positioning. For no other reason than that is its designated placement, in order for it to align with the grid markings that it is set within. They do indeed land in out-of-nowhere places. They indeed land out of nowhere. Forgive me, I cannot remember if you've explained to us how they land. Would you mind going over it again? These tubes... Tubes? Are they tubes? we choose to call them this for today's purpose of explanation, are created off-world. Their integrity, their intelligence, their system, their conduct, making them what they are, is captured in a program that can be considered into the size of a dice. Hmm, this feels new info. Maybe we haven't discussed this before. Yet you understand that energy is not something that can remain still. It has to be moving. All that is life is energy. It has to flow. Therefore, energy can be manipulated into any size or shape that is desired. Yet, in this case, we would say, that is useful. So, I feel you're about to say that this dice could be dropped onto the planet, and from the place it was created, buttons can be pressed and poof! A full-size monolith blows up like an inflatable castle. This is in layman's terms, of course. This is more or less correct, yet certainly will suffice. It's not a button, though, is it? What is it? It is a device that is activated involving it being placed on a particular crystal formation. How does it communicate with the dice? The dice is already programmed to connect and communicate with the device. This is not new technology, when you think of how much similarity this presents in devices already present upon your planet that communicate with each other. Can I also pick up on me saying it is dropped? Clearly, one doesn't simply open the hatch on a ship and one wishes it luck as you wave it goodbye. Indeed, Blossom. It is more precisely directed as to its landing pad, would we say. It is programmed to do so via teleportation. Keep in mind, we are speaking to you as if this is an everyday run-of-the-mill procedure. This is not so. The delicacy of these pillars plays a huge role in how they are handled. They are considered of high intelligence and high importance. Just inquiring... Are they constructed to their original size, i.e. are they originally made to the size in which we see them on Earth? This is correct. You are putting into my mind the movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. For obvious reasons. So, and here's an out there question. If they were to open up, what would be seen inside? Particles. What? No motherboard or levers and flashing red and green lights? No little blue people are waiting to be awakened and set to work? No 1812 overtures? No fireworks? Just particles? Well, I never. So now, if we may, we need to talk about these particles. Particles of energy that remain, not dormant, yet almost to the point of sleep that await their divine moment of activation that we have spoken about in the past. These particles speak to each other 
and to those particles and other such monoliths that have arrived and lie in wait. Have I heard that the ones here from earlier have been removed? Some. Not all. Do you recall us showing you an image of them being in an enclosed sealed room and yet unable to be dissected, for want of a better term? Their blueprint remains in their situated original landing hold. Could it not be that those who work in the monolith department off-world could use the same device to shrink them again and get Scotty to beam them up? That is not necessary. They are perfectly safe where they are. And... And this is a big and. I can feel it. They were not designed to do so. So you mean they cannot be shrunk once they have expanded to their full size? Correct. Why? It is not needed. They are safe where they are. For they cannot be penetrated and they have no purpose back on board. Can I just clarify, if memory serves, that you who choose to be known as the Federation of Light, the overseers of the overseers, do not reside on a ship. You just reside in a level of vibration out there somewhere. Correct again, Blossom. We like your play on words in order to keep it simple. Yet you can manifest a ship, should it be appropriate for you to say visit. And then you would also take form that is fitting for that particular situation or circumstance. Indeed. I just wanted to make it clear that it's not you, or perhaps not your department, that is involved in the creation of that which we speak. A thought. If energy can be manipulated... What is it that would prevent the monoliths from suddenly disappearing? Curiosity. Uh, please explain. They create much curiosity as they stand. The mystery is evoking unawakened possibilities to become possible. For whom? All. Are they not seeming to match that of images that are already present in certain movies? Movies that are futuristic? I believe so. So, along with their many purposes, which we have spoken of before, they are assisting souls to recognize the future that is coming. That which many signed up to attend. I love that. The fact that we're signed up to attend the future. Another t-shirt, Joe. <laughs> I guess... That is what is so exciting about them. Here they are in our reality, and they are so futuristic to us, which, as you say, helps us to know that it's actually happening. What is actually happening, Blossom? The future. That which you've spoken to us about. That which is to bring the new and honest world into fruition. The one that we're all here to manifest. I love it. It fills one's being with such encouragement. The reason you are feeling so encouraged and of joy regarding this matter at hand, Blossom, is because your soul is recognizing it as truth. You are remembering. This is why the monoliths are so intriguing. They trigger memories of your future. An interesting concept. Memories of our future. Not really, Blossom, for you have been shown it in a past that is the present, and lived it in a future that will one day be the past. Hold the phone a minute. Let me digest that little gem. So I assume we were shown it before we came back down to Earth, the past. Shown it as in a presentation of the future that we're now in, the present. And then it will be in the past because one day it will have happened Plus the fact everything is happening at once. No, not ready to go down that rabbit hole today. That everything is happening at once stuff always blows my brains out. Yet you are everything. All at once. Apparently so. I accept it. Yet, well, you know, it's difficult to get one's head around. From where your perspective is, at this space in your current supposed reality. Of course. 
Guys, I feel this is a good space to finish today's chat. Loved it. As we always do, we love all that derives from these conversations. And we love, too, how they spark the soul's interest, creating many new pathways to explore. Indeed. Wow. There we go. In gratitude, in loving service, I am. P.S. Apparently, the monolith has now been removed. <laughs>